name is Kwame Blackwood, and welcome to the telling of my experience of the past four years at Dozier, otherwise known as my senior defense. Now, before I start this, I would like to thank my panel members and all my peers for coming to view this, uh, my last final um, project of senior defense. Um, I would also like to take this time uh, to express my theme in which I'm using the hit show Futurama. Basically, Futurama is a show about a uh, person, Philip J. Fry, who was from 1999, who was accidentally cryogenically frozen and awoke in the year 3000. Now, this uh, relates to me because as Philip J. Fry woke up in a whole new futuristic um, setting, I walked into Dozier, a whole new futuristic setting type of way in there. Um, without further ado, let's begin on how my future changed forever. Now, who is Kwame Blackwood? Um, as my friends, family, teachers can actually um, verify, I'm a person who always loves to smile. I'm a person that likes to work hard and I tend to be creative. Um, I love learning for the most part and um, I uh, just like seeing everybody happy. Um, and on a serious note, I am grateful both for the opportunity that Doja Libby has given me over the past four years and the experiences that has come with it. Now, on to my family. Um, as you can see, I have a fairly big family, um, which ranges from my sisters, um, my nieces and nephews, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, and my dogs. Um, also, you see another person here, my little brother. You see him multiple times. Um, he is why I'm here. He is why I do what I do. He is the most important person in my life. Um, I do everything for him, and basically just to show him that he is, or that with perseverance and hard work, anything can happen. On to my friends. Now, my friends played a huge role in helping me determine my future. Um, they are some of the most compassionate people you'll ever meet. They've helped me tremendously throughout my four years, whether it be from a personal problem or from a certain concept, say in physics or English. Um, <laughs> so basically, they just helped me, and I can't thank them enough. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for all of us. Um, every <coughs> single person up here, even the per people that aren't up here, thank you so much, seriously. Um, and my parts work. So, <laughs> okay, so after high school, I want to continue my learning. I want to learn forever. I want to be a person that has endless knowledge. I want to be one of those wise old men that just kind of <laughs> goes with the flow, teaches everybody. Um, now, I chose to further my learning after high school by going to college. You know why? Because um, as Professor Farnsworth, uh, main character of Futurama, once said, knowledge is power, and with it, you can rule the world. Now. Um, I got into five out of the seven universities that I applied to, um, and as I continue to click, you see colleges disappearing. It's weird. Um, only to reveal, drum roll please, <laughs> San Francisco right. State University. Yes, I will be continuing my educational journey at SF State. Now, as, um, as I thought, uh, continuing my educational journey, my new environment for the, past, the next four years, I had to think of many variables to come to a conclusion. Um, I had to think of things like technology, diversity, um, my major, and things like area. Um, with all these variables to think about, I concluded with SF State. It became perfect. Um, at SF State, there's a wide range of things to do and people to meet. Um, these things um, include events, sports, volunteer work, and fun. Um, so, um, also my major, which is um, physical therapy, is in the top 20 in the nation. Um, now, with physical therapy, uh, came comes with a huge backstory. Now, as being a very small kid, um, and, but very willed, I like to do extreme sports such as skateboarding, rollerblading, BMXing, dirt biking, um, football. 
But being the small person that I was, I got hurt easily. So um, I've had 14 broken bones so mm -hmm. far, and I've been to <coughs> physical therapy for a back I uh, injury when I was 12. Um, now, being the popular kid that I was, when I came to school from physical therapy, not being able to use a backpack and to have to wheel around this ugly thing, I got bullied. Um, and this uh, drained my confidence dramatically. Um, so my great experience at physical therapy with uh, Dr. Busfield, he actually helped me regain my, um, my confidence as well as, as, well as um, helping me decide what I want to do in life. Now, I want to specialize in pediatrics um, because of the way he helped me. And I want to help children just like me regain confidence, um, teach them how to prevent injuries, as well as rehabil rehabilitate them. Um, now, extracurricular activities have always been a part of my life. Um, I've done things, like I said, I love sports, so uh, sports is a part of my life, big time. Um, my favorite sport is Taekwondo, Olympic style Taekwondo. I've been doing martial arts for about 10 years and um, Taekwondo for about seven. Um, I actually am an instructor there and I teach uh, four hours a day, three days a week and have a total of 192 community service hours from that. So, um, and also I train uh, <coughs> Taekwondo. I'm going on to the clubs that I actually like being a part of. Um, so Tobacco Use Prevention Education is a club that I've been a part of here at Doja Libby for three years. Um, this is due to my desire to help incoming freshmen on the harmful effects of tobacco <coughs> products. Um, also, I've gotten my actual real first job um, about six months ago at Rayleigh's, which basically helps me, um, which basically helps me um, learn uh, customer service skills as well as being a productive member of society <coughs> and helping as well. Um, so going on to my thesis, from the start of my educational career, I feel as though I've always been a proficient student when it came to my academics. That being said, my previous learning opportunities and resources lacked the crucial academic properties I needed to strive when it came to learning. Prior to becoming a Doja Libby student, I failed to see this until I fortunately stepped into a whole new world, a sort of futuristic setting, if you will. Through the various projects, assignments, ups, downs, lefts, and rights, I have became a, become a student that both utilizes my peers and resources as well as independently solves problems effectively. The many projects have led me to become an adaptive leader that effectively communicates within my community about topics I'm passionate about. I'm positive that this futuristic opportunity has truly changed me for the better, preparing me for future learning as well as, well as the real world. Now, this leads me to my first quote by Mr. James Hughes. The art of communication is the language of leadership. Now, this quote actually inspires me because at Dozier, all of you guys know that there's a lot of uh, projects to where we have to work with people. Now, without teamwork, you cannot, you, um, in those types of situations, you can never truly succeed. Now, one instance where we used teamwork was in Project Ed. Um, now, EDI stands for Envision, Discover, Design, Invent, and Execute. Um, and with Project EDI, um, we wanted to focus on uh, classes uh, including medical ethics, English, and physics. Um, so one of our main inspirations for this was Emmanuel's gift. Um, this Emmanuel's gift was basically about an African man who was disabled. Um, now, he was disabled, but he was very strong-minded. Uh, he was actually criticized for being disabled, but through the hard work and uh, <laughs> perseverance, he actually showed that people who are disabled can be proud of who they are and they can persevere through life's um, hardest moments. Now, through with this project, um, the teamwork included things like um, texting, staying up late at night, Skype calls, um, company calling to see what we needed to do, um, as well as, um, so um, through that we got to make a final uh, prototype using our patented force of gravity. 
and basically it's about it helps with um, people with loss of limbs um, and it, it's a bending it helps with gripping um, so together through this project we can actually help um, we can help people learn not to be not to use pity with disabled people because it actually makes them feel um, bad about themselves and they shouldn't nobody deserves that so this uh, project has, has to help with my career be, as a physical therapist because I will focus on rehabilitation and focusing on my cus uh, my customer service skills like um, not pitting my patients even if they have a disability or uh, uh, loss of limbs. Now going back to physics, the mechanics of this was actually quite ingenious. What we did was um, we made a bending prosthetic finger uh, which basically has um, flexion in the finger. Uh, what we did was we, wrap, we made a wrap around the wrist inside a glove. We connected it through um, fishing wire and with the flexion of the wrist, the finger moved. So we had to do things like calculate um, how much force it actually took to bend the finger as well as um, we had to uh, see, we had to measure um, how, how much fishing wire and how much materials we actually needed. Um, so uh, this relates to Newton's third law, um, basically stating for every action, there's a reaction. When the wrist flexes, the finger moves. When the wrist is at rest, the finger is at rest. Therefore stating um, Newton's first law as well, basically saying, um, an object will stay in motion unless um, acted upon by an external force or the object, object will stay at rest unless acted upon. Um, also, we, the distal phalanx, the synthetic distal phalanx that we used, used a third class lever, um, uh, basically having the effort come from the wrist and the fulcrum being at the interphalangeal joint, um, putting the load all the way on the tip of the finger, causing it to bend. Um, basically, uh, Taekwondo actually helped me execute this pro project um, using my teamwork because my coworkers, um, that's Master Jaden, that's Julian, my coworkers had to help, um, we had to, we have to <coughs> collaborate together to make uh, more better, a better learning environment for our students, um, as well as it helping me execute the project, um, being in front of people, uh, presenting, uh, enunciating my words, and um, being louder. Um, so this leads me to my second quote by Miss Tarangalila, another um, character from Futura, another main character from Futurama. Um, this is a pretty simple quote, but she says, come on gang, how else are we gonna solve this problem? Being a simple quote, this actually has much more meaning. Um, this is more of a team working collaborative quote, um, thus helping with the many projects that we have, like I said. Um, another project that this actually helped with was IES, or the International Economic Summit. Um, basically, with IES, the, the objective was to improve the standard of living of our country, or which we chose was the Philippines. We also wanted to improve um, things for our made-up uh, made character, Marisol, um, whose family all had diabetes, and we wanted to create a, plan, a lesson plan for her to follow so she wouldn't have diabetes later in life. Um, we also, uh, basically this project helped me learn to prepare for the many problems that can arise when working with a group. Um, this, like I said, this was a very stressful project. The summit day was very stressful. Um, but using our tools integrated from medical ethics and economics, we could, um, we could have more diversity. We can be culturally aware of the different culture, being the Philippines, and um, we can use certain rules. 
Um, I'll go more in depth on that later. <coughs> so, continuing on with IES, basically it was more stressful due to things like our alliance falling out at the last minute and not telling us. Um, this caused a lot more stress, causing members of the group to freak out and kind of lose focus towards um, certain things, as well as um, making us go to a random group uh, to have to make a makeshift alliance, um, to make a makeshift alliance, and being unaware if we were going to reach our import slash export goals. Um, basically, um, from this, we had a bit of a problem during the day, uh, during the summit day. But throughout the project itself, we got to um, work. We got to work on everything and do well um, due to our group's hardworking uh, stature. Um, we also researched things and utilized uh, economic um, equations, uh, the GDP, GDP equation or calculations, um, which basically is investment, government spending, um, uh, investment plus government spending plus uh, export and import goals. Um, and this equaled to the consumption of our um, of our country, Philippines. Now, as I said before, Doja Libby has actually um, put me in an environment, a uh, much more advanced learning environment. Um, I remember thinking as, you know, a immature, um, short, uh, um, sophomore, that everything seems to be getting harder. Um, but fortunately, it does get harder. Uh, every single year. Um, that's because with more difficulty becomes more educational gain. Um, now, um, I first learned of how difficult the school was with something like the debate essay um, that we did in 10th grade. Basically, we wanted to defend slash uh, refute an ethical issue. In our case, it was gun control, and I was against gun control. Me and my partner were against gun control. Um, basically, through this project, I thought thinking, or I was thinking um, that I was a critical thinker, um, that I was displaying all those properties. But in reality, uh, as I continued on, I realized that I did no such thing. Um, uh, basically, throughout this project, I relied solely on my partner to do the work, and I relied on copying and pasting just to receive a good grade. Although it did seem effective, we actually won the debate and got a very good grade on it. We, um, this messed me up in the long run because I couldn't call myself a critical thinker. I didn't know the, know the material. Um, but saying that, going uh, next year, um, in junior year, we did not the me medical museum and we did a journal entry. Now, I did this by myself because my partners were busy uh, doing other things and I took it upon myself um, to be that leader and do it. Um, now basically this is where my creative writing and problem uh, solving skills thrived. Um, through um, the many facts that I had and my creative writing, I learned that um, I can think outside of the box and basically um, create a more convincing story since this was all fiction. Um, we also had to do, we also had to be in a set time period. Uh, basically, um, basically telling a story of a man with a disease. In my case, it was Ebola. And um, uh, my motivation was this to obvious, was to obviously get a good grade. Um, and I, basically, I had writer's block, but to get out of that kind of uh, slump, I thought, Deep into my, uh, I thought, yeah, I um, relied on my thinking and I sat down and I researched, uh, I researched small little details which kind of set me over the edge. Um, for instance, like when were certain medicines made um, in the year 2000. Now, this. Now, this uh, brings me to my final quote. 
And this is, when you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. This is by Philip J. Fry, um, who is uh, the main character of uh, Futurama. Basically what he's saying is, as a leader, you can't expect to want to um, be rewarded for every little thing that you do. As a leader, you should be a person that wants to do the job well and wants to do the job um, complete. So this relates to Be the Change because um, in Be the Change we had to advocate for an issue that we felt strongly about. Now this um, issue, uh, or this opportunity given by the teachers was extremely fulfilling because we got to actually do something that we strongly cared about instead of having an assignment where they picked it and we um, just had to follow. Um, this left my group with a sense of fulfillment just because we felt like we did, did something. We actually made a change somewhere. Um, now with this topic, we wanted to focus on domestic abuse and the misconceptions about it. Um, and to get more of a further learning of this uh, topic, we researched copious amounts of information with things such as um, uh, domestic abuse within our own community um, or in schools. Um, we also focused on uh, going into our community as well as adapting to the ongoing problems, which I'll explain later. Um, speaking of problems, in 10th grade, we had a health uh, care advocacy project. Now this, being like Be The Change, did not, um, was not executed like Be The Change. Being the immature um, sophomore that I was, I did not know what to do. I just kind of copy and pasted facts. Me and my partner copy and pasted facts. We didn't do anything. We, we got a good grade on the assignment, but there was no learning. Um, we, we basically, um, we went into the assignment joking around, having mediocre work, um, as well as, and while advocating, oh, while advocating for suicide, we actually, being immature, we wanted to make funny memes and um, joke around at the topic, which was not displaying, uh, which was not advocating the problem correctly or displaying uh, cultural awareness and sensitivity. But going back to be the change, that is where I kind of had my sort of uh, redemption moment. Um, basically, for be the change, um, we did a public simulation in which I put myself in, into danger by um, a, pretending to abuse one of my um, group members. Now, this uh, proved um, effective because a guy wanted to actually come up and fight me for doing that. Um, obviously, he didn't, but it was really close to. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> basically, um, we also went into the, further into, into the community to ask certain people about, um, to interview certain people and conducting a PSA. This also uh, shows uh, my traits of a productive citizen of good character. Now, um, tobacco use prevention education actually fueled this by, um, by helping me, because I, I um, advocated for issues that I felt strongly about before um, doing Be The Change, which helped me in the long run. Um, like I said, I advocated for, um, like I said, I advocated for tobacco use prevention to freshmen um, because I felt strongly about it. Now going on to my final art artifact, uh, this, which is the sports med medicine final. Basically, we're to uh, explain a career changing event, um, accident that happened to uh, one of our athletes. Um, in this, we wanted to, we were to explain it, explain how, how we could have fixed it, as well as um, relate it to a career, mine being physical therapy, um, which I'll get to in a second. Um, we wanted to focus on the wrongdoings of the paramedics because the paramedics, him having a spinal injury, the paramedics actually picked him up and dropped him. And not knowing his spine was dislocated, um, they broke one of Miss O'Leary's no-nos. Um, basically, Miss O'Leary taught us to never ever shift the spine or the neck um, 
uh, thus preventing um, further paralysis or spinal injuries later. Um, this successfully shows my, my professional opinion and how I will relate this to physical therapy or being a um, sports medicine slash kinesiology major. Um, now, to revisit my thesis. Coming to an end of my high school educational career, I can say that I continue to thrive academically for the most part. I continue to do this because I learned from all the areas I lacked. Stepping into this new futuristic setting usually be, has helped me tremendously adjust to the higher educational learning opportunities. As a younger student, I questioned why we needed so many projects, um, but as I matured <coughs> into the young man that I am today, I can see that it was to aim in my education. Becoming an adaptive leader that effectively communicates with my community about topics I'm passionate about um, is strictly due to Dojo Libby's rigorous curriculum. I am prepared for future learning as well as for the real world because I was lucky enough to step into the unknown futuristic place. Now, um, coming to an end, um, I will like to thank everybody here for um, viewing and witnessing my senior defense, and I would like to personally thank Dojo Libby for helping me. Now, without further ado, any questions? <laughs> about the um, public simulation of the domestic abuse. Can you talk more about what exactly did you do? Where did you okay. do it? Did you film it? Yes, so we made a, we made a video. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, I was in um, public areas like Target. Actually, we, I was tugging on um, Alexis right there, and I, um, in front of people. I would yell at her, I would throw things at her, and I would tug her arm, and she would pretend to cry. Actually, she was very good at that, and <laughs> scary. Um, <laughs> so, basically, um, and at first, we didn't get much of, a, much of a reaction. We got the security called on us, mm -hmm. and that would have been bad, because if I was kicked out of Target, that would be bad, because I love Target. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we went to uh, the streets of Brentwood, to Tilly's, and we saw this guy right here. We looked like, oh, he's gonna be mean. So let's go mess with him. So we went and I did the same thing, <coughs> talked at her, whatever. She really sold it. She started crying and everything, and I was like, please. Um, and the guy came up, you know, fists, veins, and everything, and came up and wanted to try to fight me. But luckily, right before he swung, he told him, hey, it's a prank. <laughs> um, what, what did he say to you? Oh, oh, some profanity. Uh -huh. so no, kind of telling you to knock it off. Yeah, basically, basically to knock it off. Basically to. He was like, um, I don't play that. Uh -huh. And then he was like, um, you know, when the lady tells you to stop, right. stop. Mm -hmm. So, wow. very cool. Good guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also went into the community to make interviews mm -hmm. um, and um, to see what people would do in that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have, I have some question. Well, a question, basically in the uh, the technology mm -hmm. um, that you used. So can you uh, describe a time when you had to use technology to solve a problem and also how you adapted to the use of new technology over okay. your time here? Now, this directly correlates to Project A. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, um, we, instead of you, we wanted to focus on assistive technology. Mm -hmm. um, but although, because we couldn't make like a robot arm, we didn't have as much money. <laughs> um, but we used the internet to kind of solve a problem to where like we wanted to have the finger, the uh, prosthetic finger, be able to use like things like touchscreen. So we used the mm -hmm. internet to kind of help us solve that issue um, by making things out of you know gelatin. We used kind of like modern technology um, as well as you know cheap technology, um, but Ooh. I feel like that's the type of um, assistive technology that we used um, in the end to kind of help us. Um, but in physics, in general, like we use the technology of physics to kind of help us carry out the projects as well as, you know. Okay, so oh, I'm sorry. Well, just, I, I'm curious, I see a lot of different, which is the one that you actually built? The one that I actually this built. This one, okay. Physics. 
So, and this was the kind of ketchup of it. Mm -hmm. This is like the wristband with the fish wire mm -hmm. um, knitted through it. And we created, um, I'm not sure if you can see, but we created synthetic bone. We hardened it and then we put it in gelatin. Um, and then we hardened the gelatin. Um, we also placed nails in it, four nails each, and put rubber bands on it, thus making it bend, um, representing tendons. And then can you, can you also, when you were doing um, one of these projects, did you have to, did you struggle with something, some new technological platform that you hadn't used before? Um, with with um, IES, the picto charts, I struggled with uh, very bad. Um, thank, thanks to Spanish for actually helping me be more familiar with it. Although in Spanish, I wasn't paying attention that much. And doing a picto chart, uh, <laughs> doing a picto chart basically was really hard in the end because I kind of had to teach myself or learn from one of my other group members. But um, in the end, I did a fairly good job with it. I just have one more, do you have Yeah. Okay, so my last one, I'll just go really quickly. What do you consider your greatest success um, mm -hmm. academically here at Dojo? Um, my greatest success academically, uh, there's a lot, but I would say, I would want to say be the change. We did very well on this project, but I didn't really want to focus on the academics. I wanted to focus on the cause, and the academics came as more of like a plus, um, but I would say I learned a lot more about, um, you know, things to advocate for and how to advocate and how to be aware of certain things and how to be um, empathetic slash ethical with things. So I would say be the change that we did. Um, can you go back to the night at the medical museum? Uh, you mentioned uh, about your creative writing, how that made it kind of more convincing. Can you just give a couple details like about the story and okay, what so about your creative writing? This is about, this. we had to create a story. This was about a, <laughs> a story um, about a fictional character. Um, I named him uh, Jimmy. And basically he went to Africa and he, um, to help out. And he got lucky with a nice African um, woman. <laughs> and, but she had Ebola and as many people know, Ebola can be con contracted through bodily fluids, including um, sexual activity. Um, so <laughs> there were things like that, and then I just basically explained his symptom, how he his muscles seized up while he was driving, and he crashed. Um, things like when was, he took um, a new medicine called Dayquil, um, which was actually invented in 2000, which was my time period, so I, I did as that, and so, and then it goes on to the end to where he's actually quarantined and he, he doesn't want to write anymore. Mm -hmm. And basically I, I wanted to write what I pictured in my head, you know, I guess. Very good. <laughs>